Hi students, uh, today I want to introduce to you the phaser. Um, so the phaser is a complex number that models a sinusoid. So now that we're talking about AC, we have sinusoidal AC signals. So we're going to use the phaser to make our computations easier. Um, so what it does is the phaser transform will, um, it'll take a sinusoid in the form A cosine omega t plus phi. And um, remember that we can, um, we can express any sinusoid as either a sine or a cosine. And um, we can use phase shift um, and this phase angle to basically turn a sine into a cosine. So we're just gonna um, kind of pick one. We're gonna mm, express most of our voltages and currents with the cosine function. So um, given the sinusoid in this form, a uh, cosine function, what it's gonna do is um, the phasor transform is going to transform this sinusoid into the phase domain. And um, it's kind of like a domain that um, where the independent variable is the phase angle. The phase angle also is kind of um, like added to the um, the frequency so this might also be referred to as the frequency domain so um, the resulting phaser representation will contain um, the amplitude information and it'll contain the phase information but it actually discards this um, time dependent part of the sinusoid so the notation is this we'll say let P be a transform from sinusoid to phaser. So P is going to be like a function that's going to operate on a sinusoidal voltage function where it um, the independent variable is time, so with respect to time. And then once we turn this into a phaser, we have this kind of new notation. Um, it's almost kind of like a vector, but I'm going to put a capital V here with this script so you know that this is in phaser form. And then um, the phaser transform of our sinusoidal current function will then be the phaser form of I. So I write it like this. Um, so then the definition of the transform is this. Um, the transform is going to take this V of T, which is in the form V max, it's the top amplitude, cosine function omega T plus phi, and um, the result is going to be V max e to the J phi. And this is going to be the definition of our phaser. So um, you'll note that this here, this is an exponential form. Remember using Euler's, we can express cosine of an argument plus J sine of an argument with this e to the whatever that argument is. Um, but this no longer has omega t in it. It's just the exponential form and then we have the amplitude. Okay, so this is the definition of the phaser. If we were to take the phaser transform of the current equation with respect to t, if i of t is i m cosine of omega t plus phi, it's gonna be the same thing. We'll have i max e to the j phi, and this is the definition of our um, current in phaser form. So the key thing here is that these expressions for V and I in phasor form have just um, amplitude and phase shift angle in them, not omega t. Okay, so um, let me show you sort of in, an example from the circuit elements that we've discussed already. So for resistors, this transform is pretty straightforward, right? Because um, Ohm's law, when we're talking about um, a changing AC signal, is going to be V of t is equal to R times I of t, right? This is just Ohm's law. So if we transform both sides of the equation, 
um, to phasers, we could say since transform phasor transform of V of T is equal to phasor form of V and the phasor transform of I of T is equal to the phasor form of I, if we basically like transform the left and right hand side of these equations, phasor transform of V of T equals phasor transform of R I of T like this, then we'll just be left with um, the phasor transform of V of T is just going to give us phasor V. And then over here, since R is a constant, that can come out, and then we just have I. Okay, so this looks just like Ohm's law, but now we have this in phasor notation. Um, so it's pretty straightforward for a resistor, but then for inductors and capacitors, our voltage equations and current equations actually have derivatives in them. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math. So let's take a look at for the inductor case. So for inductors, um, we have that the voltage with respect to T is the inductance value times the derivative of the current equation with respect to time, right? So um, we'll probably be given our current in the form of a sinusoid, I max times the cosine some frequency plus some phase angle. And then um, if we take this thing, take the derivative and multiply it by L, that's going to give us V of T. So we can say that V of T will be given by L times the time derivative of this I max cosine omega T plus V. Okay, great. So um, I can, I'm going to have to pull this I M out here and I'm going to have to use the chain rule on this. So I'll take the derivative of the inside, that'll give me an omega. Derivative of the outside, the derivative of the sine is the negative cosine. So this gives me L. I pull the I M out. Take the derivative of the inside, gives me an omega. Derivative of the outside gives me a negative sine of omega t plus phi. Okay, great. So if I clean this up a little bit, I can express this as negative omega L I max sine omega t plus V. Okay, great. So this is my equation for um, voltage. Now, in the last lecture, we saw that um, we can use some trig identities. So we can use a trig identity to turn this sine into back into cosine form, right? So the way the one we want to use for this one is sine of some argument is going to be equal to cosine of that same argument plus 90. Okay, so this by um, phase shifting by 90, we can make the cosine basically fall on the negative sine part. So if we have this negative and then this sine, we can replace that with a cosine. So that's going to give me, um, after doing this trig identity shifting, um, I will now have omega L I M, my sine becomes a cosine, and then I have my argument omega T plus V plus 90. Okay, great. So then let's let, let's introduce a new variable. I'll just call it theta. Let's define this as V plus 90. So then this thing here becomes our new phase angle theta. And now um, this thing is going to um, kind of match our form that we had before. So omega L I M cosine of omega T plus theta now. Okay, so then from here, um, we can say that uh, if I want to transform this to the phasor domain, okay, transform to phasors, I'm going to do the phasor transform of the left-hand side, V of T, and that's just going to give me the phasor V. And then I'm going to do the phasor transform of this right-hand side, omega L I M cosine omega T plus theta. 
Okay, so then um, this omega L I M can come out of the transform and let's get some more room here. This gives me trans or phasor form of V is equal to omega L and then I have I M. Now um, this part here you should recognize actually here let me keep it in this form if i do this phasor transform of i m cosine omega t plus theta like this this thing here going back to our definition of the phasor transform we take the phasor transform of um, i m cosine omega t plus some phase angle is just going to be equal to I m e to the j phi, or in this case, theta, and that's going to be our I in phasor form. So the phasor transform of this thing is actually just equal to I m e to the j theta. So this is going to be omega L I m e to the j theta. Now let me go ahead and stick back in what theta is actually equal to. It's phi plus 90. So this gives me omega L I max E to the J times phi plus 90. So this is omega L I M E to the J phi E to the J 90. And then um, we can, let's look at this a little closer using Euler's. This thing is E, um, actually, just make the substitution here. This is equivalent to the cosine of 90 plus j times the sine of 90. So cosine of 90, if that's the cosine, 360, 180. At 90, the cosine's gonna be zero. So this thing's actually going to reduce to zero. Um, sine, however, comes up like this and down like that. So that means here, this, the sign's gonna be at its peak, so this is gonna be a one. So e to the j 90 is actually equal to j times one, which is just j. Okay, so now I can replace this part with just a j. So this becomes omega L, I'll put the j in front, I m e to the j phi, and now I have that this thing here is just the phasor form of I. So I put this all together. Phasor form of V is equal to J omega L times phasor form of I. And this is the phasor domain equation for um, the voltage drop across an inductor given the current. So if you look at our original equation in the time domain, here's our inductor equation in the time domain it contains um, the derivative of i. In the phasor domain, we have no derivatives. So it's much easier. We don't have to calculate any derivatives. So um, the, the derivation of this equation here is very similar for capacitors. So you guys could probably um, try that one. But once you have this, we can just use it. In, and if you do your computations in the phasor domain instead of in the time domain, um, you don't have to compute any derivatives. This is going to be helpful also when we start talking about impedance because impedance is um, also modeled by um, a complex system. So let me know if you have any questions about phasors um, in this new notation and um, we can do some examples too.